Hello folks. So it's a cold one. It's about 20 degrees and falling fast. So I, I'm making this video a little earlier than usual. But tonight I'm going after the monkey head nebula. It's going to be a wide field view with my Rasa telescope and I only have one filter left to capture oxygen. So I'm hoping the sky is clear up and, and I can finish it tonight. Now um, this is the only scope I'm going to use tonight, but I rolled out my Explorer Scientific Refractor because I want to talk about it for a second. I want to make sure people know I, I didn't forget about this scope. Um, I still want to get back to running two rigs a night, but right now in the freezing weather and with snow on the ground, um, I don't think it's a, a good idea because the snow... Um, amplifies my light pollution and I want to start doing broadband with this so this is not the night to start doing that this is going to be my primary scope for galaxy season and I think the the choice is obvious because you know galaxies are small and the focal length on this scope is twice that of my Rasa but that doesn't mean I'm not going to use the Rasa I'm just going to keep it on narrowband targets because there's another plane I hope it's not noisy um, actually, by April 1st, um, objects like the Elephant Trunk Nebula will be back in view by 3 a.m. Uh, not that I want to capture that one again. Yeah, it is noisy. But I'm just saying, I think I'm going to be able to use this year-round on nebulas, and after galaxy season, they'll both be doing nebulas. So, and by the way, I say nebulas with an S. Or do other people say nebulae for plural? I, I, I don't know who makes up that stuff, but I like nebula. So if, you can correct me if you want, but I'm sticking with the S. All right, I, oh, there's something else I learned about the Rasa. I'll tell you inside where it's warmer. Hey, I am not having a good day. Um, I've started over three hours late because of clouds. It's just the way this winter has been going. And now I'm in a mad dash to um, hopefully finish this project tonight. Even if I only get an hour of data, I don't even care. I just want to finish something. But what I wanted to talk to you about is um, when I first got the Rasa, I was telling people that I was creating flats every time I switched a filter. And what I discovered lately is I don't have to do that. Um, it can work like a refractor where... Uh, you can keep a flats library and how that's possible is well like we all know about flats is um, uh, as long as you don't rotate the camera which I never do and I have a filter holder for each two inch filter and the filters are on here tight so the camera doesn't rotate the filter itself doesn't rotate and when I slide the filter in um, a magnet in the filter slider takes over about halfway and sucks it in. And I, and I checked, there's no wobble in there. So it appears that the filter is going in exactly the same way every single time. So the camera doesn't rotate, the filter doesn't rotate. It goes into the filter slider um, the same way every single time. And before I put it in, I make sure I don't introduce any new dust. And if, if that all works out, which it has been lately for me, you don't have to create flats every single time. So it's working, and I, I really don't like creating flats. Um, actually, I have a friend who has a Rasa. He doesn't even create flats. As long as he, you have a, a, a clean imaging train, um, and you're good with your, your database, uh, your data extraction, your, your data background extraction, and you can still pull out that contrast, Maybe you can get away with it. I tried it and it doesn't look half bad, but I still like creating plants. But um, I wanted to show you these other things here. My friend told me about them. It's a filter holder for the filter holder. You can just slide this in and you can chain them together. Um, my friend who told me about them doesn't actually have these himself. And I, I think if he had seen these in person, he, <laughs> he might not have recommended them because... They're kind of cheap plastic, and the filters kind of do, they don't lock. They will fall out if you turn them or if you drop them or turn them upside down. So don't do that, but they get the job done. It's just I was kind of hoping they'd be better quality if they're from Star Arizona. And, uh, yeah, 
And if there's anything better, let me know. I'd be interested. I, I really don't like these, but they're, they're what I'm using now. So, anyway, let's look at my imaging session. Okay, so here is the Ross. I've only set up one surveillance camera right now. And I moved the Rasa actually very close to the house because I knew I was going to get off to a late start. That way I could get it away from the garage and have uh, more breathing room to point west. Because I want to, all of my imaging is going to be on the west side of the meridian. Um, that's just the way it is. And let me show you my imaging session right now. Um... So right now I've got over 40 minutes of oxygen captured. I'm using gain 75, offset 15. Um, my mean readout right now is um, at 1848, which is probably the moon is not out. So I I think it's, it's it has to be the snow jacking me up right now. Because I think this could be down near 1,200 or 1,300. So, oh well. And uh, my, um, let's see the image history. The the HFR is holding steady um, at, at around 1.4. Um, you can see 1.38 um, when I first started. And uh, this is when clouds moved in. It went up to 2.18 and the number of stars actually dropped frame 10. So I deleted that one. And uh, and right now at 1.39 1, 1 is about as low as I've seen this Rasa go in terms of pinpoint stars. So that's the lower number you get, the better. And like I've mentioned before is um, I have... Um, an electronic focuser that Celestron sent me, I've just never had to use it. This Rasa has proven itself every night I've been out that it does not lose focus. I'm going to need to install that focuser at some point because if I'm going to start capturing nebulas in, with an S, nebulas, if I'm going to start capturing those at uh, 3 or 4 in the morning, um, I'm going to automate that, and I'm going to have to have the the, uh, the focus automated as well. So I'm definitely going to want to install that um, at some point. So, And let's take a look. This is how one oxygen frame looks. So this is a good sign that I'm seeing nebulosity in a single frame because I know I'm not going to be getting much data today. So um, if I can even get, I think I'll definitely get an hour's worth. I don't see any more clouds coming but I've only got 45 minutes right right now. Hmm. Makes me nervous. I see my guiding. 46 frames. You see, I don't know if you could hear those those gusts in the background. But look what it did to this one. Look at the spike there. That's not good. Um, and I'm I don't know if my my mug shot might be blocking it, but my exposures are two seconds. 1.42 let's let's just reset this for a second and take a look i'm just a little bit uptight because i you know i the the weather was just crappy out there i had to go out three hours late just to do my pole master and you know i can't wear gloves out there when i'm trying to be precise and it's it's about 17 or 18 degrees fahrenheit when i'm doing that and it's just not a pleasant experience. It's one of those nights. If there's no gust, it looks pretty good <laughs> at 0.69. So, eh, hopefully the weather calms down now. And I'm hoping I can get another hour, but I don't think so. Well, that's all I got. Oh, no, it's not all I got. I wanted to show you one more thing. This is my... HA data and this is two and a half hours worth and I think it's really cool looking and I bet I could have picked up more nebulosity around it if I had more time to capture because I can see faint stuff going on but this is a little part the uh, little area here that surprised me when I was doing my my uh, framing mosaic wizard I, I saw this in there and I wanted to pick it up and I've been trying to come up with a nickname for it so this is the monkey head what would be what would we call this? What do, what do monkeys eat? I mean, do they eat nuts? Can we call it the, the monkey head and the nut? 
I don't know, the monkey head and the fruit. I wish it looked like an arg, then we could call it monkey, the monkey head and the banana. Anyway, uh, I couldn't find this in Stellarium. I, I'm sure, so I don't know what it's cataloged as, but I'm sure it has an identifier. I, I bet Sky Safari has it in there. That, that software doesn't miss a thing. So anyway, let's think of a good name for it. Uh, that's all I got. I'll see you guys later. Hello, folks. So it, um, but I'm thinking I wish it. I'm rambling, mother. Fuck. But, um, and when I slide it, mother. Fuck. Hey, I am back. And what did I want to? I don't know what I wanted to tell you. Something.